I always love making this type of video. It's crunch time. The next round of the level one CFA exams kicks off in just about a week from tomorrow morning. I always love making videos like this shortly before different sittings for the CFA exams because depending on what your level of preparedness is, depending on what your level of test anxiety may be, different candidates will find themselves in drastically different head spaces one week before their test. In this video, we're gonna talk specifically about those people who may be pretty well prepared and should probably relax, and those people who are not quite as prepared as they should be and also need to relax, but importantly, make sure they focus their last six study days on the right stuff. A question I've gotten a lot over the course of this year anyway has been, hey AJ, I've been scoring 71% on average on my mock exams. Am I prepared enough for my upcoming test? And you can watch my old videos. You can look at the minimum passing score estimates that are published online. In most cases, a 71% score would be enough to clear the level one exam, but not every case. So some people will say, oh, you need to be scoring 73 to 75 on the practice tests. You don't necessarily need to be, but that is a good goal to shoot for. The way I describe it is that if you are actually scoring 73, 74, 75% or higher on any of your mock exams, as long as they are what I'll call reputable mock exams, something from the Institute or a more difficult test prep providers mock, then you should be relatively confident that you've done just about everything you need to, especially considering you're gonna learn a lot more in the last three days before the exam, if you do what I'll talk about in a moment correctly. In general, you know, 73, 74, 75% on a mock is a really good place to be. It means you've prepared a lot over the past three, four, five, six months. And to that group of people, I wanna say, you should pause and sort of take in this this week as as a moment in time that you will hopefully see again on the level two and level three exams but after that you're never going to have been prepared this well for any academic challenge probably for the rest of your life you're never going to need to and a different way to say that might be you're never going to be at a, a point in your life where you have as much debatably beneficial information memorized in your brain such that you could answer such a wide variety of, of questions, finance questions in this case, correctly. It's just a really cool place to be in. If, you're, if you are able to pause and reflect and go, wow, I've crammed so much information, I've learned so much over the prior handful of months that uh, I should be excited about where I'm at intellectually and I've grown as a, as a finance professional, but also you should be excited about your opportunity to knock out this test. One thing I never liked about the CFA exams was that compared to sports, you get very few chances to perform. Uh, in sports, you have a game like every week. You know, you have a lot of practice, but maybe you have one game a week. Well, in that one game, you have a chance to score or do your thing that you're trying to do or whatever, exhibit all the work that you've put in. With the CFA exams, the only relative comparison would be mock exams, but if you approach mock exams the way I did and the way I recommend people do it, even then mock exams are not that much of a of a measuring stick. So taking the actual test is one of the only times you actually get to perform. Really challenge yourself and put to test all the stuff you've been working on for so long. And it's exciting to be able to do that, especially if you're well prepared. So go into it with, with an optimistic, but also a positive and excited mindset. I think it can really help out your mental well being, which should help your brain perform a little bit better come exam day. And then the last point to this group of people is also a similar point I'm gonna to make to the group of people who maybe are not as well prepared. Make sure that you spend two of your final three days leading up to your exam memorizing formulas. This is especially true for the level one exam. I talked about this in a video a couple weeks ago and I have a few other videos on the channel where I describe the importance of taking two entire days or about 24 hours total just memorizing all the formulas you might need to know. I'm not going to explain in detail in this video why it's important or exactly how I recommend people go about memorizing that many formulas, but just trust me, trust me, trust me, please. It is wildly important that you memorize all the formulas that you may need to know to answer any questions right in the few days before your CFA exam. If you don't have a good list of formula sheets, you can check out my Patreon page where I have the formula sheets that I used to study from available there for uh, 20 bucks. Now, to the people who maybe are not as well prepared, which based on statistics and given the fact that only about 
35 to 40 percent of the people who sit for the level one exam pass in any given sitting that's probably the majority of people watching this video is that you're not yet prepared to the point where you might be able to pass this test i want to be clear although the majority of your preparation did need to have happened over the prior handful of months there are some things i believe you can do in this in this final week to drastically improve your chances of passing if your chances are currently lower than you'd want them to be. And for the people who are well prepared, this information is still gonna be helpful if you're finding yourself wondering what to really focus in on during the last week. I'm never going to say that you should try to be able to guess what exact questions are gonna appear in your CFA exam because we know that everything in the curriculum is fair game. Anything can come up. However, there are, we'll say three to five LOSs across each book that if you've paid attention to the practice questions you've been doing, and especially if you did, and hopefully you did, all the blue box examples through the CFA modules and the EOC or quiz questions, uh, you have noticed some common themes. There will be certain types of questions in equity, certain types of questions in the fixed income section, certain types of questions in the quant section that you have had to solve like 20, 30, 40, 50 times. So number one, if you are not scoring well at all and you're really running out of time in your preparation, I would say, you wanna focus on prioritizing practice questions. First and foremost, practice questions are most important, especially the ones from the Institute, either their modules or mock exams, using the questions in mock exams from the Institute as practice questions, just solving them over and over and making sure you learn the concepts. Cranking, is out, cranking out as many of those as you can in this final week is the best way that your brain's gonna learn at this point. And based on my prior point, if you're really like running out of time, if you're watching this in your exams in three days, you need to at least crank out 10 to 20 hours of practice questions specifically focused on those areas that I just mentioned that you can think of that you have seen more than a dozen times you know, over, the, over your test prep period so far. There are just some questions that the Institute asks about very often in practice questions and, and throughout the curriculum. Those are the ones that maybe have a higher probability of showing up on your exam. And um, those are the ones that if you've run out of time and you have to pick some to study, you should probably start there. But it's up to you to decide which ones you feel like those are because I can't tell you which questions come up more or less often or anything like that. Honestly, I don't remember the majority of them at this point probably. So um, you have to be a little bit in tune with what you've been working on. Maybe these are the questions that have been the most difficult for you too. Doesn't matter. Those are the ones you need to grind out if you've been seeing them often. And then you also need to be memorizing formulas no matter what. Just like I mentioned for the group of people who are pretty well prepared, there are types of questions that can come up on CFA exams that you don't even have to know anything about the concept. You could have not been studying for the last three months. And if you can memorize a quick formula, like a three or four variable algebra equation, and you can identify what variables relate to what, let's say economic factor like GDP, change in population, um, um, growth rate in the economy, those a few things, there will be questions on the exam you might be able to just answer in 20 seconds by plugging three numbers into an equation and, and coming out with the answer. So what I'm saying is that memorizing formulas, not only are they extremely important, but they also can sometimes serve as a substitute for proper CFA exam preparation. They're not gonna replace it, but they could help out a little bit if you're in a crunch. Again, you should certainly be focusing on this in the two days leading up to your CFA exam. I still recommend taking the 24 hours right before your exam off for your brain to rest. And there are some really important reasons for why that is. So watch my other videos on what to do like in the days before your CFA exam. You need to be focusing on memorizing those formulas that I talked about earlier. There are different ways to do this. Mark Meldrum has preached on a great system to do this with. That's what I followed. That's where my formula sheets that are available on my Patreon were generated from. Well, they're generated from the curriculum based on the rules he kind of told me to follow and it worked for me. So hopefully you have some formulas written down. If you have a formula sheet from a test prep provider, that could work. If you don't, you can you can use mine, you can pay for mine. Um, and they might save you a little bit of time and, and help you prepare too. At the end of the day, if you're scoring below where you need to be to hopefully pass this thing, your chances aren't great. And your goal over the next five to 10 days is going to be take the steps you can to, to try to increase your statistical probability of passing your upcoming test as much as you can. That's all your job is right now. You just got to stay focused on that. Don't let it stress you out. It is what it is. Do everything you can do to improve those odds as much as possible. I hope this is helpful for everyone. Drop some of your own tips down in the comments below. 
best of luck studying. I hope your exams go well. Thanks for the support on the videos. As always, have a good one.